I thought I would do a video on this before it um, completely fades and goes dormant for the summer. It's a, a European bee orchid, which is like, I guess, kind of rare in cultivation. Um, but maybe they're becoming more and more available. I don't know, but I guess they used to be really hard to find and they still, I guess, are. Everyone always asks me, where did you get that? Um, it's an Offrey's uh, bee orchid. They use, um, what's that, sexual deception or uh, pseudo copulation to like trick a saw fly or a bee into uh, pollinating it. This is actually a saw fly orchid, not a bumblebee orchid, but um, I'm not gonna, I'll put the name on there, but I don't know how to pronounce the species name. It's a winter growing species from Greece that goes summer dormant. They have like a a little potato tuber that they um, go dormant and store energy for the summer. Uh, you can see this one kind of pushed out. I have them growing in perlite. You can kind of see the tuber like pushed up out of the pot. I was exposed. Generally what happens is that tuber will shrivel up and then at the bottom of the pot at the tip of a root a new tuber will form and they tend to like inchworm from tuber to tuber. Um, sometimes I guess under ideal conditions and whatever they can produce two tubers and that's what this one did last year and produced two tubers so now I have two individual plants um, but you can see one of the bulbs was like or potatoes was like real big and so the plants like more robust and then the secondary tuber it was uh, kind of small but uh, it's a cool flower it reminds me of um, where is it at oh my god it reminds me of like a little dancing Grateful Dead like teddy bear. So basically once the flower spike starts to fade, so does the plant, the rosette will start to like fade and shrivel and as it slowly declines I'll slowly dry it out like I'll just slowly decrease the watering frequency and then um, when the plant is basically dead, probably around April, into April, I'll completely stop watering it and then uh, I keep the pot bone dry in the window sh in the shade during the summer and I keep the pot and the tuber and the perlite bone dry so like um, whatever the humidity is which is pretty high that's it no uh, try and keep the potato dry and then um, water triggers it and wakes it up so I water I start watering again in like October mid middle October and then about a week or two later, it pops up out of the perlite and starts to grow. It's, um, I mean, coastal Southern California, so it is also a Mediterranean climate, which is very similar to Greece. So this one does fit in pretty well, actually, to my particular climate conditions. I don't have to do much to it except for know when to stop watering it and when to start watering it. It still needs to dry in between or the little uh, new tuber will rot. So it does still need to like basically dry out in between watering. I know, rare in cultivation, pretty cool. It's novelty. It's interesting. 
I like orchids with a life cycle where there's like a dormant period or like some sort of like deciduous phase or I don't know. It's just more interesting, challenging. These are um, some still images of its um, seasonal progressions like as the plant fades after blooming and then the tuber um, in its summer uh, dormancy. Um, and then so like from late April when the plant dries out till um, all through summer, I just keep it like on an um, indoor shelf, um, dry in the perlite at whatever humidity is. And then um, store the little potato um, dry. And then um, this last summer I made two potatoes, <laughs> one potato, two potato. And then this is how I store them, kind of like dry pots. And then uh, mid-October I water them. Uh, and then the plant springs to life when the temperatures are chill and water is it's a Mediterranean growing species. So it grows when it's wet and cold. I've had it for a little while. Um, I don't know, at least two years. Um, I don't know, like. I'd say like the rest of them, it's easy to grow, but you know what? I grow stuff that everybody, like a lot of people kill. So I don't know, like I, if I say something's easy, that doesn't necessarily mean it is.